I think my best moment um, actually is a moment that maybe not a, a ton of people saw. Uh, in 2001, at the Edmonton World Championships, I led a group of guys from my home country of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, one of them was 17, one was 18, and one was 19. I was the old man on the team uh, back then at 27. And I captained that team to a bronze medal at the World Championships. It eventually became silver. And to date, that is my best performance. It's my best memory because I have enough individual accolades, but to have gotten that group of guys, you know, uh, my country had never had any world championship relay medals of any kind and no four by one history whatsoever, four by one um, Olympics or world championships. So to have those guys standing on that podium, like I told you we could do it if we just figured it out um, and stuck to our script, um, that to me was the greatest moment of my career. You know, I think up until 2008, it was probably a tie between Jesse Owens in 1936 and, and what he did, the four gold medals in the shadow of Hitler and, and what that meant to the human race. Um, that was the tie between that and I think Mike Powell in 1991 dethroning, you know, the great Carl Lewis in the long jump finally and, and setting the, the world record and eclipsing, eclipsing, obviously, one of the great records in this sport of, of Bob Beeman. But I think being in that stadium, in the bird's nest, in 2008, the 100 meter final, and watching one man separate from the other seven fastest men on planet Earth, I've never been so completely flabbergasted by a single moment in track and field. That to me is the most amazing moment in the history of this sport. My transition to post-career success, you are coming from a world where you have always been, you know, top of the charts. You were the best in high school, chances are you were the best uh, in university, and then you were one of the best and certainly the, the, the fastest on planet Earth. That transition to the next thing you're going to do, understand very, very clearly that you are now a rookie. You are now starting all over. And how high, the heights that you're coming from mean absolutely nothing. So I literally begged, borrowed, and, you know, and pleaded with anybody who would give me a job because I knew it's something I could do. I knew I could be good at it, given the reps. So I, um, I went and groveled at the feet of NBC for a, a number of years, and they told me they weren't hiring yet. In essence, what they were in fact doing is letting another station groom me. And then after that station had groomed me for two years, they called me up and in 2007 I did my first world championships. An Emmy nominated um, track and field broadcaster, I'm very proud of that because never in the history of, of my sport in, in America has anybody ever been nominated for an Emmy Award. The Emmy Award is given to the absolute best on television. Um, I also have a business where I coach guys who are getting ready to play um, American football. So I get, so it still allows me, uh, still allows me to coach. And uh, I am uh, an ambassador for the IAAF. I'm glad that I had the career that I had, but I am having immense fun now in my post-career.